I mean, it's much easier to write when you've got something you want to say. Otherwise, it's just uh, playing with blocks or something. <laughs> So we talked a little bit about, before about how Mouse was banned in the Tennessee school district. Um, with this unprecedented wave of bans and challenges against other books, especially books by LGBT authors and people of color, and then Mouse most egregiously um, a couple of months ago, I was wondering if Mouse had ever been banned before, and what are the differences you see in how, if it was banned, what are the differences in how it was banned before versus how it was banned today? Well, Mouse wasn't that bad, which is why it was... Uh, there were people who were very distrustful of it, even when it first came out in America. Uh, but it was never really bad. It was challenged sometimes. Like, and, and in terms of teaching it in school, I never thought it was made for children. I was kind of annoyed when I found out it was a young adult book, among other things. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, thankfully, it's also being taught in post-grad courses, so I, I had to get over my animus. And, and to be absolutely truthful, it wasn't banned in Tennessee. It was removed. It was a request to remove it from the curriculum, which is yeah. somewhat different from well, being banned. Yeah, literally would be banned in terms of removing access to a book. But I was just the metonym for book ban. You know how like the mighty long arm of the law is a metonym for, for the full body of the law, let's say. Um, and yeah, you're right. It was really about. Um, LGBTQ plus 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 and uh, about race issues and in a way I think Mouse was used as the example that outraged everybody outside of that small county uh, because of what I was describing before of it being sort of universal by being cats and mice and really specific and in its information uh, was easier to defend it than some not going around saying I don't want some man in a dress and a beard and stubble all over his legs and, uh, and have him being the target of my dog, uh, as if this was like an issue. Everybody grows up in <laughs> multi-gender bathrooms, you know, they're, they're one at home. Uh, so, <laughs> it's not a problem. Uh, and the anxiety over some of those issues would not let people see past it to like make Connections with other bands, you know, like uh, uh, the, I, when I first heard that in Tennessee, for example, they were interested in uh, not having anybody made uncomfortable in their classrooms. Like, I thought they were talking about black people, you know, <laughs> but that wasn't it at all. It's not wanting to make a junior whose great grandfather was a Klansman uncomfortable. You know? <laughs> and therefore, I have to admit, that it's great to have these in the curriculum because uh, I'd much rather have that kid learn the Turner Diaries with an educator than with their parents who had the book on their shelves, you know? Uh, so it's just, um, the bannings that did happen, Maus was banned by, in a drive-by show in Russia since that had just come up because it had a swastika on the cover and made Putin uncomfortable. Uh, but it's only been, um, it isn't, the main act. It's kind of insane that these great uh, genius public relations promoters managed to make Mouse into a bestseller again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, um, it makes them uncomfortable, not because of the Jews, it makes them uncomfortable because I'm, I'm cursing at my father at one point in the book, I'm cursing at my mother at another point in the book. It's about the intergenerational thing of not obeying authority. And People on school boards, they like authority. They like being in charge. And a lot of this has to do with squashing curiosity, with defiance of authority. Nothing in, in Mouse is uh, more um, chaste uh, compared to what they're seeing on their screens as soon as they get TikTok open. Um, and it's not the issue. The issue is about defunding public education and libraries, goddamn. <laughs> After a lot of these serious questions, I have a one, one question which is not really that serious. You talked about your initial influence of Kafka on you and maybe how you discovered Kafka. If you were given a choice of taking any of Kafka's novels or books and reworking that into a graphic novel for the new generation or whatever, which one would you choose and why? <laughs> uh, first of all, I wouldn't. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I've never let the 
else get turned into a film. I didn't let it get translated into other languages. I'm still resistant to having it online. That book. Uh, but if I was going to somehow have to make a living, somebody said, okay, take a Kafka novel, we'll give you a billion dollars. You know? um, <laughs> I think it might be America, because he'd never been here. He knew nothing about it. Uh, and he made it up. And <laughs> that just seems so cool. <laughs> When I read it as a kid, it's great. He discovered metaverses before anybody else. <laughs>